Okay, you're on. Hello. Yeah. Welcome to Facebook Live uh, School Board Edition. Uh, tonight, a meeting at 7 p.m. That'd be Monday. Uh, so you have you know, about six and a half hours to get a babysitter for the kids. Of course, you'll probably be headed to the stampede and not a school board meeting, but uh, that's why you read the Tribune tomorrow and you see what all was discussed. In the meantime, let's talk about some uh, rather important topics that will be discussed at tonight's uh, board meeting or work session. By the way, I'm Tyler Silvey, education rep reporter for the uh, Greeley Tribune. Uh, number one is uh, the board's going to discuss student assessment data, and we all know about the state tests that kids have to take. Um, these aren't state tests, these are district level, but they give districts an idea of how their kids are doing uh, and how they might do on state tests. And so they do these uh, two, four, sometimes six times a year depending on the test. In this case they're looking at Dibbles or uh, Dibbles testing and uh, the big takeaway from these test results from uh, just a glance on my, on my part was that students who are in blended learning classrooms are outperforming students who are not in blended learning classrooms. And to explain that further, blended learning, uh, for those who aren't aware, is a trendy teaching model that involves technology and, in many cases, grouping kids into different stations while the teacher bounces from station to station. It's uh, supposed to be a tool for helping some students catch up and help others move ahead. Uh, so you, you're uh, sort of solving problem uh, for all kids uh, on all levels of the spectrum. The next important thing I've labeled it as don't judge us. It looks like the school board is planning to send uh, a nasty gram, eh, maybe not so nasty, but a disappointed letter to the State Board of Education regarding the State Board's recent decision on district performance frameworks. Now every district and every school in the state has a performance framework or a performance improvement plan or something to that effect that they file with the state or the state uh, you know judges district A and says you are performing you know good so happiness is or you're performing bad so shape up and there are four or five um, different performance indicators and the state uses a variety of factors to determine where these districts sit on that continuum. District 6 is accredited with improvement this year, which is better than, uh, it could be a lot worse. Uh, like six, eight years ago, the district was on academic watch and they had to take some serious steps to improve. Um, so right now they're accredited with improvement, but still, here's the nutshell of what the board is upset about. Um, the state board, uh, June 8th, and, and I'll write more about this in the future, um, decided to keep things the way they have been with regard, meaning school districts get a performance rating from the state based on a variety of factors including test scores of certain subgroups of students. Um, district 6, among other districts, sought to change that. Their reasoning was that many students fall into many subgroups and thus are overcounted in getting the district's rating. For example, the state will look at how uh, kids who are English language learners are doing in tests. They'll look at kids who are uh, in poverty, i.e. they're on free or reduced price lunches, or other quote-unquote risk factors, and they'll take each of those groups and then rate the district. What District 6 and other districts wanted was a lot of those risk factors to be combined into one subgroup that the state would judge them on. Now, it's not that the district didn't want those groups reported. They, they do want the, the groups reported. It's just they, they don't want the English language learners, students on free and reduced lunches, and uh, you know, all the others uh, to be separated out and rating the district because they feel like those students are overcounted. So, um, state disagreed. District 6 probably joins a host of other districts sending the state board essentially a letter that says tsk, tsk. Did I say tsk, tsk, tsk? There's not an I in that, is there? <laughs> tsk, tsk. I need uh, my mother to teach me how to tsk. Um, the last thing that I think is rather interesting, and you'll see some more reporting on this as the summer goes along, um, but this is a really interesting concept, and it started over at UNC with a, a graduate student there, the Fred Tardes School of Innovation. It's going to be a K-8 through school that's opening in August, 300, 350 kids. The board's going to discuss that tonight, and stay tuned because we'll, we'll write about that as well. It looks like a District 6 uh, partnership with these original creators. So. 
it'll be sort of the look and feel of a charter school, but it sounds like it's going to be within the district. Uh, but like I said, there'll be more reporting on that in the future, but uh, potentially an exciting new option for parents. Um, if you're looking uh, for a different option for your kids, look in the fall. Uh, thanks for sticking with us. Again, I'm Tyler, uh, education reporter at the Greeley Tribune. I uh, hope you guys all have a fun time at the board meeting tonight or the stampede, uh, wherever you may be. Bye.